Welcome back to the Blue Chip Breakdown of Vols fans. I'm your host, Boom, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at the matchup between the Tennessee Volunteers and the Missouri Tigers. We're going to take a look at Tennessee's offense versus Missouri's defense today. First thing that we're going to do is take a look at some of the numbers so that we can get a feel for how the matchup looks on paper, and then we'll kind of get more into some of the more intricate parts of this matchup. All right, so we're going to start off with total offense. So Tennessee's total offense is ranked number 13th in the country with 4,198 yards, 466.4 yards per game, and 6.6 .6 yards per play. We are also the number 22 scoring offense in the country with 34.8 points per game. And Mizzou's defense is number 41st in the country in total defense, giving up 3,091 yards, 343.4 yards per game, 5.2 yards per play. And they are ranked number 52nd in scoring defense, giving up 24 points per game. All right, now within that, Tennessee's rushing offense is ranked number three in the country. We all know we've got a great rushing game this season. We have 2,050 yards. That's good for 227.8 yards per game, 5.7, almost 5.8 yards per carry, and 17 touchdowns on the ground. Missouri's defense is number 24th in rushing defense, and they've given up 1,029 yards, 114.3 yards per game, 3.6 yards per carry and five touchdowns all right now for the passing offense versus the passing defense tennessee's passing offense is ranked number 58th in the country with 2148 yards that's good for 238.7 yards per game completing 64 percent of our passes 16 touchdowns four interceptions uh, and we also are number 42nd in the country in sacks given up we've given up 15 on the season that's good for about 1.6 six almost 1.7 sacks per game so we got to get that cleaned up missouri's passing defense is number 64th in the country giving up 2062 yards 229.1 yards per game 62 percent completions allowed 18 touchdowns and they have seven interceptions they are ranked number 15th in the country in sacks with 27 on the season and they have about three per game all right so that's a whole bunch of numbers just to basically say that mizzou's got a pretty average defense i would say anyway they don't have a whole lot of great playmakers they don't do a whole lot of things you know super great or anything like that they will get pressure on the quarterback i think that's the biggest thing that kind of stands out whenever you look at those numbers is the sacks but a lot of that is just manufactured from pressure i think that they blitz more than any team in the entire country i think that they're like definitely number one in the sec so Biggest thing for our offense is going to be identify where the pressure is coming from. And I can tell you right now that Josh Heupel and Coach Hosley are going to have some things schemed up to try to counteract what Mizzou does in the blitzing game. They're going to have run blitzes, pass blitzes, a lot of different things. So, you know, I feel pretty confident with what the install was this week and probably, you know, a lot of it last week as well. We are going to install a lot of new plays just to make sure that we can hit those openings in the team that pretty much lives and dies by the blitz. All right, let's go ahead and get into some of the playmakers for this Missouri Tigers defense. I wanna start off with number six, Darius Robinson. He's six foot five, 296 pounds. He is a defensive end. He has five and a half sacks on the season. He's leading the team. He has one forced fumble. Now this is a guy, okay, that he stood out to me as soon as I started watching film, just from walking around. He is a really big end, right? I mean, he is a huge guy. 6'5", 296, or, you know, 295, 298. This is probably the biggest defensive end that this team has faced this entire season. Good thing about him, though, I think what works well in Tennessee's favor is our tackles tend to have more of an issue with speed coming off of those edges, okay? He's not an overly twitchy guy, okay? He's big, and he does have some twitch to him, but he's a lot more about just continuing to pursue that quarterback. And as long as we can kind of step up into the pocket, we can offset what he likes to do. He also, you know, sets up all of his moves to the outside. So if we just play good sound fundamental pass blocking, maintain that inside leverage right there, okay? Get a good strong punch and just kind of guide him up that football field. And, you know, again, our quarterback, you know, Milton, he can step up into the pocket and hopefully he will know where to go with the football because that pressure will be coming they blitz at a very, very high clip. 
All right, so next guy on this list is number eight. This is Tyron Hopper. He's six foot two, 221 pounds. He plays linebacker. He is leading the team with 53 tackles and he has three sacks. Now, this is the heart and soul of their defense, okay? He didn't stand out to me on film very, very much, but he does a good job blitzing, okay? They're gonna blitz him a lot. They like to move him around a ton on this defense. So he's a guy that we definitely have to kind of look out for, make sure that we, you know, can identify where he is and just, you know, have him cleaned up in whether it's a run blocking scheme or a pass blocking scheme, but he is going to, you know, try to get some pressure on our quarterbacks. So we've got to keep a close eye out on Tyron. Next guy is number 15, Johnny Walker Jr. He's six foot three, 244 pounds. At defensive end, he has four sacks on the season and two forced fumbles. Now, he's a little bit of a smaller guy, okay? But that's really more of an average size for a D end, okay? He looks pretty good. He's more of a twitchy guy. But, you know, again, I don't think it's a whole lot for us to be too concerned with. A lot of their pressure, you know, a lot of these sacks and stats and things like that is coming from the fact that they blitz. And sometimes, you know, these guys go unblocked and they all have really, really high motors. So we just have to make sure that we identify where he is at all times. Okay, he's gonna be on the opposite side of Darius Robertson. So, you know, we just have to make sure that we are picking these guys up in pass protection. All right, so next guy is another front seven guy. This is number 21, Niles Gaddy. And a lot of y'all probably recognize his name. He actually did come to Tennessee in 2018 and he transferred out and he, you know, he's ended up at Missouri. So he is a Nashville native. He's six foot four, 248 pounds. He's playing defensive end. He has three sacks on this season. Now this is a guy who does not start, but he does a good job coming off of that bench. And sometimes they'll utilize him in some pressure packages, almost like a rabbit's package, kind of like what Tennessee likes to run. I actually think that Mizzou really tries a lot to be like Tennessee on offense and defense. It seems like they are mimicking our style of play in a lot of different ways. And, you know, y'all see that as we go through the matchups throughout this week. But I will say that Niles is a guy that, you know, obviously playing at Tennessee, being from Tennessee, he's going to want to make plays. You always have to look out for the hometown kids whenever you're playing up against other teams, especially in some of these bigger games. That is a guy for us to keep a close eye out on. All right, next guy is gonna be number 13, and this is Dalen Cornell. He's six foot two, 218 pounds. He plays safety. He has 40 tackles, which is third best on their defense, five pass breakups, and two sacks. Now, Dylan is a player that they move around a lot. I think that they probably move him around the most out of anyone on that defense. He has really good size. He's almost like a you know safety linebacker hybrid. I've seen him play far off of the football, playing more of a free look. I've seen him come up into the box, playing more of a run heavy, strong safety look. I've seen him play kind of you know like a linebacker and really focusing on that run game. And they really like to blitz him, especially around that goal line. That is going to be a place that Tennessee has to have some things dialed up to counteract what this defense likes to do, especially those pressure packages. But one thing that I will say about him and really everyone on this defense, especially you know once you get to those skill guys, they're not overly physical, okay? He's got great size, but he doesn't play with that passion that you would probably expect. It just kind of seems like, you know, he may not fully love football and you know I know I'm going really really deep into the psychology of this whole thing but that's just what I do you got to look for any edge that you can get with your team and I think that that's one that we have on him seems like he's you know one of those guys that will kind of give up if he's beat or you know if their team gets down so keep a close eye out for that if we can take advantage of him blitzing or if we can you know maybe get some big passes on him early on in this game I think that he'll kind of shut down and we won't have to worry about him for the rest of the game. All right, and the last guy that we're gonna take a look at is number seven, Chris Abrams Drain. He's five foot 11, 178 pounds. He has four interceptions and 11 pass breakups on the season. So he is definitely a smaller player, okay? They've got him listed at 5'11", 178. He may be that, but I mean, he looks a little bit even smaller than that. So he's not a guy that's overly physical, you know, again, just talked about that, but he will come up and make plays. I think that he does a lot better of a job in deeper pass coverages. So whenever they go cover three, which is not very often, a lot of what they like to do on defense is play man and blitz. And then they'll have some like weird zone packages behind that. And it's usually a mix of man on the outside and zone in the middle of the football field. They're just trying to get you to force the football into some stupid windows 
with some pressure and with some blitzes. So he is a guy that has, you know, obviously he's leading the team in interceptions. So he can come up with those picks. Just had to be careful just throwing that football up into stupid coverage, okay, into bad spots. But I think that Joe Milton's going to do a great job of that. This is going to be a really big game for Tennessee's wide receivers. All right, now I want to take a look at Tennessee's red zone offense, okay? We are ranked number 62 in the country, 85% conversions with 21 touchdowns, 14 field goals on 41 attempts. And out of those touchdowns, we've got 12 rushing and nine passing. Missouri is ranked number 73rd in the country in red zone defense, allowing 84% conversions, 17 touchdowns, 10 field goals on 32 attempts. Four of those were rushing touchdowns, 13 of those were passing touchdowns. All right, now let's go ahead and just jump into the third down offense for Tennessee, okay? We're ranked number 27 and we're converting at 45%. Mizzou is ranked 64th in third down defense and they're giving up 38%. All right, so obviously this is going to be a big factor in this game. Tennessee is going to have to keep the football on the field and we're going to have to score, okay? Like we talked about a little bit earlier in this film, Mizzou is going to blitz in that red zone. That's a big part of the reason that there's so many passing touchdowns, okay? They like to blitz and just play straight man-to-man -man coverage. I think that Tennessee's wide receivers can find some success there and I really do feel like Cole Tyler's going to have a lot of stuff schemed up. He just seems to have this team's number. And, you know, we should find a whole lot of success, I think, on third down and in the red zone. So if we can do those things, then I feel like we're going to be okay. Something else that I really want to point out about this Missouri Tigers defense is that they do not play the read option well. Every team that they've played up against that has ran that read option has ran it with a lot of success, okay? Same teams run it, you know, 14, 15 times in a game. And, you know, Mizzou might stop it once or twice, but because they blitz so much, it takes away all those reads. A lot of these guys are just pinning their ears back and coming after the quarterback. They can get undisciplined on those edges and we can take full advantage of that. So overall, what I see is Tennessee having a lot of success running the football in this game, whether it's with our running backs or whether it's with Joe Milton, who's going to have to step up a lot in our running game. I feel like just to keep those chains moving and to keep this defense a little bit more honest, expect some screens, okay? Expect more running back screens in this game. And, you know, like we keep on saying, expect some different plays. I feel like this is a week that Tennessee probably installed a lot of different stuff just for this defense because we have not played up against one up until this point that's going to blitz the way that Missouri is going to blitz. As long as we can identify where those blitzes are coming from, have some hot reads, wide receivers need to be on the same page with Joe Milton. Obviously, offensive line has got to do a great job of picking up pressure. If all of those things happen, okay, if all those things happen, and if Tennessee runs the football like they have this entire season, I feel like the offense is going to have a lot of success. Expect some people wide open. Expect a whole lot of one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Playmakers have got to make plays, okay? Middle of the field will be open too sometimes, all right? We are going to see just a couple of different fronts. We will see mostly a nickel base with four defensive linemen. This is going to be our first time seeing this in a long time. Now, the one caveat to that is I feel like that's a better way to try to stop what Tennessee likes to do, all right? You've got to have more linemen up front to be able to take up those blocks and hope that your linebackers and blitzing safeties can kind of, you know, sneak in between some creases and crevices and make some plays in Tennessee's backfield. But again, we're going to have some things schemed up for that. Now, sometimes Mizzou will go to a three-man line. A lot of times that is on third downs and sometimes they're going to bring pressure and, you know, other times they're going to kind of sit back. So I feel like for the most part, they're only bringing four in those packages. It's like they want to try to play almost like a drop eight, but it's not a drop eight. It ends up being like a drop seven. Uh, but, you know, they want to make you think that this is a drop eight. And then they try to bring some pressure from some different places, try to throw off whatever your blocking scheme is and hope that they can get home playing pass coverage. I just feel like Missouri's defense is kind of easy to game plan for, right? They're going to do a whole lot of different things, but you just have to be able to identify where the pressure is coming from. Whenever you live and die by the blitz, there's always going to be some people wide open. And there's going to be a spot on the field that is wide open. We just have to know where that is. And if we're all on the same page, Tennessee has a whole lot of success. So I hope that y'all enjoyed that video. And as always, please make sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks. Peace.